Hi viewers. We are back for day three of Weeds Week. And for reference, today is June 17th, 2020. It's a Wednesday. And um, what we've been doing this week is taking a look at some weeds that are uh, prevalent and common in our areas. You'll hear of us quite a bit of background noise today. The chickens are pretty vocal. And uh, so each day we are discussing a different aspect of weed management, different species. And um, today the two weeds that we will talk about are Joe Pie Weed and Goldenrod. Now these, both these weeds, are ones that bridge the category of beneficial plant or weed. It really depends on, like we discussed before, what your production goals are in your system. Now, the good thing about both these weeds, Joe Pie Weed and Goldenrod, is that neither of them are considered poisonous. They actually have moderate feed value as forages. So, um, livestock that tend to have a browser type habit of feeding such as deer and goats and sheep will have greater success uh, with these forages in their system than horses. Um, cattle will will eat goldenrod. Of course it's not preferred um, but there aren't any worries about toxicities with either of those plants either joe pieweed or goldenrod. The issues that we have with them in production systems are competition for nutrients um, and crowding. So really it's just if the populations become too high that they're prohibiting the use of nutrients by our desirable plants, then it's time we need to do something about them, of course. Um, if you have issues with either of these weeds, if you call them issues, some people would, would probably be pleased to have a stand of either goldenrod or Joe Pie Weed. Um, if you have issues with them, it's likely in an area of your property that would be considered undisturbed. So this is um, this is like in my place where I have them. It's the tree line. It's the the successional habitat, the early successional habitat between my lawn and the woods. That's where my goldenrod and Joe Pie Weed is located. So it's a fairly undisturbed site. It's not frequently mowed. It's not tilled. Um, it's par partial sun, partial shade. Joe Pie Weed does best in partial sun, partial shade. Goldenrod will thrive in sun, but will also grow in those partial shady areas. And I have lots of both plants to show you today. Both plants have benefits as pollinator uh, habitat. Both the flowers are attractive to them and their foliage is um, attractive to caterpillars. So uh, they provide benefit to um, bees, butterflies, um, flies, and other types of, of insects that are pollinators in our ecosystem. So when we talk about weeds, Joe Pie Weed and Goldenrod are some that um, I don't consider to be that bad. The point at which they become bad is when they are prohibiting the success of your desirable plants. So let's first off look at some goldenrod because I have it right next to me where I'm walking. I've just been kind of trying to walk a little bit further away from the chickens so that they're less noisy. Um, but they're going where I go today. This, this is kind of cool. I wonder if I can show you when I think that this goldenrod has a spittle bug on it. Um, spittle bugs are one of my favorite bugs. I think they're cute. They, uh, they feed on the sap of the plant and they exude little fart bubbles up their butts as they're feeding. And you can see right here on this plant, I don't know if it'll focus for you, but you see that, the bubbles? Right here, my finger is, let me get that for you. I believe that that's the feeding habit of a spittle bug. Let me see if I can, uh find it in here. Hello. Yeah, there it is. Let me flip my camera around so you can see. Oh. Hi, Spittlebug. 
I don't mind if spittle bugs eat my goldenrod. That's no problem. Um, so typically what you'll see with spittle bugs is that bubbling. They're just feeding and exuding their excrement. These bubbles. <laughs> but I think they're kind of a cute bug. Anywho, that's a spittle bug and this is goldenrod. Uh, so goldenrod and Joe Pieweed have multiple similarities. They are in the same family. They are both in the aster family, which is the sunflower family. And um, they both tend to have world habits of their leaves. So they grow around a circle of the main stem. This one has alternate spacing of the leaves in a whirl. This is goldenrod. Um, there are many plants that are commonly confused for goldenrod, especially when it's in this stage with no flower. Um, goldenrod can be easily confused for ironweed. It can be confused for mare's tail. Mare's tail's leaves are quite a bit different and ironweeds are, are wider as well. But they have very similar habits and they're all in the aster family. They have world leaf shapes. They grow similar in height on a, a fairly skinny stem, um, but there are slight differences between them. And a um, mare's tail is more commonly an issue in agronomic crops. Um, it's, I believe it's an annual, but um, goldenrod and joe pieweed are perennials. So they will come back from the same plant, same root system multiple years. Um, they also reproduce by seed, but they primarily colonize areas by rhizomatous uh, roots. So they will spread through their root system. Let me get a little farther away, and then I'll get a little bit closer up so you can see the height of the, these plants. Joe pieweed is significantly larger than goldenrod, um, both in leaf shape and actual height. Um, let me turn my camera back around. And goldenrod um, is a little bit shorter, but typically you'll see these growing anywhere from three to six feet in height, uh, whereas Joe Pieweed can get up to seven foot. So it's going to be considerably taller with larger leaves. But in comparison to me, we've discussed this before, I'm just, I'm not even five foot. Okay, and it's up to my shoulder. So this is at about, about four feet tall at this point. This is our goldenrod. Goldenrod actually has a reputation as being a medicinal plant and it would be considered a native plant as well. Um, most of what we have is probably Canada goldenrod. Um, and it is included in a lot of pollinator mixes. So if you are a beekeeper, you will know that goldenrod is often one of the last sources of pollen for bees uh, in the fall before they hunker down for the winter. So many beekeepers will specifically keep patches of goldenrod around because it's one of the latest flowering um, perennial native plants. And Joe Pie Weed, it blooms a bit earlier, different flowers, um, but it has value as well. Now, if you wanna treat either of them in a pasture system, and I, I believe that's warranted in many cases, um, these, along with uh, ironweed, are fairly good candidates for use of a weed wiper because they grow so much taller than most of our other plants. Okay, so if this is your grazed pasture, I'm, I have chickens grazing, okay, but if this is your grazed pasture and these are the weeds that you're dealing with, the, the animals are going to graze around those ones they don't particularly like and that will give you an opportunity to run the wiper across the field and hit those taller weeds with a systemic herbicide um, so that the herbicide hits the target weed and not the off-target desirable plants. So because of their advanced height and um, their very, you know, their upright growth habit, uh, they are good candidates for use of the weed wiper. A lot of people like the weed wiper because it's fairly easy to use and um, you don't have a lot of off-target movement with the weed wiper. And uh, sometimes it gives you an extended period of when you can get the herbicide on and get results. Uh, the best time to treat any of these plants that I've talked about today, goldenrod, joe pieweed, um, ironweed, is when they're smaller. You'll have the best success when they're small with a broadleaf herbicide. But um, if you can't get to them, at that stage, the weed wiper is a good option. And 
um, goldenrod and Joe pie weed and um, ironweed, they're all perennials that spread by rhizomes and seeds, and um, they're responsive to most of the broadleaf herbicides. Varying differences between which products you choose to use, um, but all are fairly responsive, so you should get decent control uh, with any broadleaf herbicide. Glyphosate is fairly effective on all three as well. It's not very effective on mare's tail, but like I mentioned, mare's tail is a look-alike to goldenrod, but they typically are in different areas. Mare's tail is going to be more common in an annual agronomic crop system than a permanent pasture or on the border of a hayfield. Not to say that it can't be there, it's just less likely. So if you are in a situation where you're managing, managing pasture or hayfields, in Noble County, I'd say it's more likely that you're going to have goldenrod versus mare's tail. And in that case, stick with what I'm telling you today about how to manage uh, goldenrod. Now let's move on to the Joe Pye weed. One of my chickens here, one of Beth's chickens. All the chickens are actually Bethany's. So I say mine are, uh, you know, we're a family unit. They all belong to all of us. <laughs> this is Joe Pye weed, folks. Significantly larger, you can see with my hand. World habit. I'll flip my camera around so you can see it closer up. Significantly larger leaves and it will grow very, very tall in comparison and a thicker stem. But from far away, it can be difficult to distinguish which of those upright um, aster weeds is this. Uh, once you get closer and you really take a look at that world habit. I think that's the most distinguishing thing about Joe Pye weed is that the leaves are so large and this distinct whirl. Let me flip my camera. When you look at the world leaf shapes, and I have some poison ivy by my feet, so I'm going to try not to get into that. Do you remember how when we looked at the goldenrod, the leaves were alternatively whirled? So they were growing in a circle around the main stem, but they were alternately arranged, staggered up the stem. So there would be a leaf here, then a leaf here, then a leaf here, moving its way up the stem. We'll compare again before we quit the, the live stream, but you'll see that in the case of Joe Pye weed, they are oppositely arranged in a whirl. That means they're all growing from the same point on the stem. This is opposite versus alternate. So that can be a way to distinguish differences as well. This will have a really showy big flower on it that ranges from white to pink. Some people do try to grow it in the landscape on purpose. Um, and as long as you can keep it contained, that's fine. As I mentioned, these plants, both Joe Pye weed and goldenrod, spread by rhizomes and by seed. And the seed is primarily transported by the wind. So if you are using these plants, for landscape value, that's something to keep in mind, that you can enjoy them for the flowers um, and, and let them bloom and attract the pollinators through that period of time, but you really do want to deadhead them or remove the seed head if you can to prevent off-target movement of those plants before the growing season is over. And um, if you believe that you have an issue with either of these, the goldenrod or the joe pie weed in your, your hay or pasture system, feel free to reach out and we can discuss if it's really causing issues for you on productivity, if it's a threat to your livestock or your yields, or um, if it's a sign of a different issue, both goldenrod and Joe Pye weed thrive on marginal soils. Those could be chronically dry. They could be kind of chronically wet, um, fairly acidic. They like that undisturbed habitat, although goldenrod will easily creep into disturbed areas as well. Um, but the most established patches will be those that are undisturbed, like permanent pasture or the interface between um, tilled ground and, and forest. So let's look one more time at the leaf arrangement of the goldenrod for comparison. You'll see, again, we have a world arrangement around the stem, but the leaves are alternatively placed on the stem, staggered up the stem and if you missed it earlier and you happen to be joining we do have spittle bug activity right now on the golden rod, rod and I, I like spittle bugs I think they're kind of cool um, but in both cases 
These are weeds that you'll likely see in your systems in our areas. There are states where these plants are actually desirable and considered um, endangered in some cases, the Joe Pye weed especially. So you may have conversations with people that live in different parts of the United States that view them completely different from you. Like you may suggest, oh, I really need to get a handle on that Joe Pye weed that's creeping into my hay field this year. It's kind of getting out of hand. And they might go, what on earth? Why would you do that? Because that plant's considered endangered in uh, the state of Maryland. So it is a native plant. It does, does have value as a pollinator habitat. And it can have forage value for browser type livestock like deer and goats. Sheep um, will eat the leaves off the stems as high up as they can reach when they're looking for something different um, besides grass and clovers. So I've had sheep eat it. <laughs> and also the same is true with ironweed. They will pluck the leaves off of the stems as high up as they can reach because those are the most palatable parts of the plant. Um, so for both of these, if you want to prevent the spread of seed, you'd want to mow the flowers off. I, so what you want to do is allow them to bloom to create the habitat for the pollinators. Um, but then before they actually set the seed, develop the seed, mow them off. That will help reduce the spread of the seed, but keep your pollinator patch thriving. So um, remember that both Joe Pieweed and Goldenrod are perennial weeds that come back from a rhizomatous root system. Um, so most likely if your control method is mowing or using a weed wiper in the areas that are sensitive to you that you don't want it in, that should provide adequate control um, so that it, it doesn't creep in and create additional issues. So if you have big issues with it, it's likely a sign of some pretty acidic soils or lack of other nutrients. Uh, that are causing your desirable plants not to thrive there and creating the ability for these weeds to move in. And with that, we'll wrap up today. Bethany is calling me. I hope this has been informative and I will share uh, links to the USDA plant profiles for both Joe Pieweed and Goldenrod once the live stream wraps up. Okay, we'll see you back tomorrow and we'll cover another set of weeds. Happy Weeds Week!